Hi, welcome back to another video uh, for the complete website builder tutorial showing you how to build a website from scratch using uh, the MobiRise web development tool which is a Twitter based um, drag and drop editor that you can use to make full on websites. Uh, I had a I had this question recently from Pradeep and he says is MobiRise SEO friendly Please do a tutorial on that, answering the questions like, does it create a sitemap for the website, or um, does it generate meta tags, etc., etc. Uh, the short answer, Pradeep, is yes, um, it is SEO friendly, as SEO friendly as any other HTML website, but it does mean that you have to do some work to be able to get that in there. Now let me go through some of the um, some of the things that MobiRise has built into it. Uh, that you can utilize uh, for search engine optimization. So if you go to, <coughs> let's go to the page level first. So you click on your pages, and then each, you know, each individual page has this little blue gear icon here. And if you click on that, then you get some options. So uh, one of the first SEO things that you can do is to name your um, file names, good names. Uh, index obviously is going to need to be your very first page, but all of your internal pages uh, should have good file names and file name structure. Um, you should have a title on every page. That's what's going to be shown in the browser window or on the tab at the very top. Um, it's also what gets pulled in uh, from certain places uh, whenever you share uh, links to your um, to your website. Uh, you can give a meta description, and so this is just a description that's going to show up in things like a Google search. Um, it's the little, uh, like the little snippet of code underneath the title when you do a search online, and so that is another place where you can uh, put in keywords. And then also, I've shared this in other videos, um, like this one here, where you can link in uh, a style sheet into the head of the code. So this is where you're going to insert a lot of information, uh, meta information about your website or your page. Now, this doesn't have the ability, uh, not yet, to be to have a universal or a global set of uh, head tags and things like that. So you're going to have to do this for every single page. This is why I've said over and over, um, if you have more than five pages on your website you should probably use something like a WordPress or some sort of uh, managed solution where um, where they have like a a global header or a global footer um, that you can only change you only need to change that code once and then it changes across all your pages the header itself does change across all the pages but there's a lot more to a website than just the menu um, there's things like this, like the head code or uh, inserting um, JavaScript into uh, just before the end of the body code. Uh, those are the types of things that you would do uh, in WordPress all across your site. This would be a part of a footer and this would be a part of a header and that header gets applied to every single page uh, automatically without because you're using a template system. But here you're just hard coding HTML pages and so each page you have to take care uh, it gives you some freedom to be able to do different things on different pages but it also uh, if you have a lot of pages it can get unwieldy and a little bit out of control so my suggestion to people is if, if you have more than five pages here um, it's gonna get difficult to um, to manage different parts like this because when you make one change, if you want to change that across your whole website, you're going to have to make a change on every single individual page. So if you have 15 or 20 pages, that means you just have to copy and paste across all the pages. And um, it, it's the reason that things like WordPress exist and templating systems like Jekyll uh, and static site generators because people don't want to deal with that. So. Um, specifically web developers if you're working on a website that has a hundred pages there's no way that you want to go through and, and make those changes across all of the pages so uh, that's my best advice about MobiRise 
but if you do fit into that small website category this is really great because it allows you to quickly uh, generate something it gives you a uh, just a WYSIWYG editor that you can make edits and then publish on the fly uh, so for someone with a small website or a landing page this is really great software um, <coughs> So what you would do is you would just put all of your, you know, your meta information in here. So you would have some sort of meta tag, and then you can just list that all the way through. So you would just, you know, you create one, and then you drop down to the next line, and you create meta tags like this. As far as I know, there's no, um, there's no indication that you can only have certain meta tags or a certain number of meta tags. All this is is a framework for outputting a real website. So whatever you put in here is actually going to be inserted into the head code. And whatever you put here is going to be inserted on this page just before the, the body code, uh, the ending body tag. So uh, so that's very good. Uh, this place is something before the doc type, so the very, very first line of the page. So if you wanted to put some sort of PHP script uh, in there, that would be a good place to put it. Um, so that's the in in Moby Rise settings. There's not really any other um, not really any other settings here. You can place your Google Analytics uh, after the opening body tag, um, but there's nothing there. So that's the that's the basics. So that is available on every single page, obviously whatever you put on the page itself has SEO implications and uh, how you use things like uh, h1 headers and things like that so you can actually let's see I can find a place you can actually change um, if I have a text block you can change this text so any text that you have on here, you can actually give um, a little bit more weight to it by putting, like giving it an H1 or an H2 uh, heading. So that's another way to kind of sneak in some SEO. Um, H1 has um, greater relevance to search engines because it typically signifies, you know, a page header, and that's important information. So thinking about how you how you structure your information on the page um, actually will help search engine optimization as well. Uh, so let's go to outside sources. Um, because this, and I'll show you, because it's a, just a regular website, so I'm just going to publish this. And then we'll take a look at the code uh, behind the website. Remember I put in the, uh, the meta tags so you'll see those meta tags show up in the code itself. <coughs> see if it'll open up here. Um, while we're waiting for that to download, there are actually for uh, the sitemap. Let's talk about the sitemap first. This is actually a, a really nice sitemap generator. It's called xml-sitemaps.com and it leads you all the way through uh, the steps for creating a sitemap for your website and this is good for any uh, website or HTML website so you put the full website URL here uh, you change how frequently um, your website is going to be updated for many people it's going to be you know very rarely and then so this will be the default just using the the server's response time um, you probably don't need to change very many of these settings unless you know what you're doing and then there's a start button and it'll it'll index up to 500 pages um, and then what you do after that is you'll be redirected to a details page and it, it'll tell you any uh, how many pages if they're broken links etc and then you download and use that file uh, and you put it into the domain root folder of your website. So the the root folder of your website would be 
here where your index and your page so the very top level of your page if you go out of that then you go you know out of the folder where your website is so that's called the root of your website the root folder and so you would put your uh, sitemap page right there and then you go to your Google webmaster account and then you can add your sitemap URL wherever you're going to add it um, so that's how to to create an, uh, a sitemap that can be submitted to places like Google and Bing and Yahoo uh, so it helps them to crawl your sitemap so, um, oh, let's look at our website here so we have the website here and if we look at if we view the page source let's see okay so here is here is the head section so you can see that there are some names uh, some meta information that's already put in <coughs> um, it's put in the uh, the image icon this is for our um, right here so the little favicon up there uh, you can go through and you can do a description that's the uh, the meta description uh, content box right here but I left it blank but you could put that in there and then you can see here this is these are the meta tags that I also put in there so this information here is what I put into uh, the head section and you can see that it outputs fine on the HTML side so what I really love about MobiRise is this is what is output by MobiRise. So it's a little bit class heavy, uh, especially you know this kind of stuff here. It's not exactly great, but it's not going to be bad in terms of SEO. It's just a little unwieldy if you have to you know do this website <laughs> without MobiRise. Uh, but these things are in here in order to. Um, make the styles inside of the text editor so they've created their own uh, classes which styles the content in a certain way um, but you can see that regular text is being output there's nothing uh, there's nothing strange here there's nothing um, that a search engine uh, bot is going to go through and say oh well, this is really strange um, so and then when you have a script, you have something to be loaded before the end of the body tag. Uh, this is the last body tag, and it will go right here. So these are scripts that it automatically uh, loads up. These are part of uh, MobiRise. But if you also wanted to add scripts of your own, JavaScript scripts, or you wanted to run something, uh, you could do that down here. Um, and let's go to the last part of the question, which is, um, does it deal with meta tags or social meta tags? Uh, the meta tags, you can put your own meta tags in here. And this is where it's going to require a little bit of legwork to you. But if you go to, let's say, ogp.me, which is an open graph protocol which was uh, developed by Facebook. And what this does is allows you to put meta information into your website. You can see here. Uh, you know, you have the head section, you have the title, <coughs> and then you have all this meta information. And when you share the page, this meta information gets read, and it also gets um, archived by search engines as well. So they can read this, and they can produce a, um, a better search result based on some of this meta information that you put in here. Uh, here's some other optional things. You can read through this whole thing. Um, there's a lot of information here and there's a way to, to kind of connect multiple things as well. So doing arrays and connecting multiple versions of the same meta tag. Uh, so you can play around with that and try it. But what you would do is you would take that information and you would put that here um, inside the head code right here where I put these meta tags so you would just build that out <coughs> and then put that in here and then you would need to do that for every page uh, where you wanted that particular information so if you want the same information across every page so that when it gets shared on Facebook um, 
then it comes up no matter which page you're on or if you want to have page specific information it will be here and you would put it inside the head code uh, so that's the that's the short answer uh, well maybe the long answer <laughs> Uh, for search engine optimization it is SEO friendly and it's SEO friendly because it produces a regular um, HTML CSS and JavaScript website for you to use and then once you have published the website you could actually go into these files if you wanted to do some other things and make some changes later and you didn't want those changes necessarily to be reflected in MobiRise, you could just you could output a whole website and then open that in a text editor. So you could open this up. I, I like to use Atom. And so these are just regular HTML pages. They're not uh, proprietary pages that only open in MobiRise. Let's see if we can get it to open. <clears throat> okay, and so now we have it open in our uh, text editor, and you can see that we can just go through, and I can edit this just like I uh, have written HTML in here. Um, so it's um, it's real powerful. You could you could go through optionally and put those things into the head uh, right here. Uh, if you wanted to. So I think that I've landed on MobiRise because it's powerful in that way. It's powerful me uh, for me as a web developer so I can use it to mock up a website very quickly and then make customized changes across the board uh, to some of the elements that they have added in or it's powerful for somebody who doesn't know uh, very much HTML or CSS and then they can go through and and build a really nice website uh, just through the drag and drop, just through the clicking on things and making changes uh, like you would in any text editor. I mean, uh, like a Word document. So, hopefully that answers uh, some of the SEO questions. And if you do have any more questions, please, you know, leave a comment just like this on the video. And uh, you can also email me. My email is Brian B R I A N at highwaywebconsulting.com uh, also be, be sure that you subscribe uh, to the channel uh, it allows you to receive notifications whenever I release new videos and also uh, you can see me a tweet, a tweet on Twitter uh, so on Twitter I'm at Brian B-R-I-A-N and my last name Hafferkamp H-A-F-E-R-K-A-M-P alright thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video